Servus also from my side. I'm Fabian. I'm a linebacker for the Raiders. And I'm, I want to talk about a little bit about film studying as a linebacker. And as, as we are all amateurs, as a line, so we don't have a linebacker in import, we need to be very efficient with it because time, we don't have so much time here. We, we're studying or we work, so you probably, everybody can relate. So we need to be a little bit more efficient than the imports who can watch film all the time, all day long, if they want. And this is only one way to do it because there are, I think, millions of ways to do it. It's just how I do it on a regular basis when, I, when we have games in the AFL or also internationally. So the most important thing is to think about what do I want out of this video session right now. So that for me is the scouting, which, which helps in any play. So you want to see what formations do they have, what plays do they run, is it run or pass, is there any tendency. And then uh, you also can have a little practice at home. So you work with the video tool as if you're on the field and you prepare mentally for the game. And the other thing I like to do is prepare for personal big plays. Because you want to be in a situation at the right time, all the time, and you think about some plays, one to three plays that you want to make. And you're, these are always in your head and you're trying to prepare for the moment when the ball is there and you're going to pick it, or the quarterback is there you're going to sack it. So to really have an impact on the game, personally. So, scouting. There's tendencies. So you want to know their favorite formations, really basic stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it really basic so everybody can follow. And if you have any more specific questions, just feel, feel free to ask all the time. So you want to know the basic formations, the favorite plays out of them, and if it's run or pass. And for a linebacker, it's really, really important to know when it's a run or when it's a pass. So this gives you such an advantage beforehand because the offense is always a step in front of you. They know exactly what they're going to play, right? They, they know their play, they're running. And some of the times, they don't even audible a play, so most of the offenses. And also, advanced offenses, they know when if they audible the play, they still know the play before the snap is coming. We don't know that. We as a defense and also as linebackers, we don't know what they're going to do. So we need to prepare <coughs> on, on film and see what tendencies they have. So we need less reaction and more action. The more you think about it on the field, the slower you get when you tra translate it into motion. So it's really important to know beforehand some things. Good. I want to show you something on Huddle. I prepared, um, I prepared one team. Those are the Silver Hawks, and then another. They didn't do so good this year in our in our league, and the other team are the Vikings. And I just took, I just took uh, like I would do in a normal in a normal week of preparation. <laughs> we have maybe game fil film against us, or the last film. I always do that because mm -hmm. other, more than that would just be too time consuming. The coaches look through everything. I just take the last film we replayed them, if we played them, or uh, the last game they played. So because there are also differences in teams, some, some teams just prepare for us differently than they do for all the other teams. So that's what I want to, I want to see the difference there. So the first thing I do is I just run through, through a formation report. Do you guys, are you guys familiar with Huddle? Who, who uses Huddle in this room? Hands up. So most of you do. So that's nothing new for you. <laughs> so for me, this is the formation report is really important for me because it's really easy. And it gives you a lot of hints. So you here see the 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 Silverhawks played Rex out a lot, Lee White, which are our formations. Maybe you call it differently. It's just a two by two formation, shotgun, three by one. And uh, three by one also to the other side, and then we have some formations one percent. So it's not not a big deal to talk about them right now. I want to focus on Rex out because that's the main main formation. And then you can see 
all the plays they run, all their favorite passes. And if you're really like keen on doing that, you can draw them up. I used to do that in the past. Draw every play up and think about where's my run fit going to be, where am I going to drop to the pass, and how do you recognize that it's this, um, this pass pattern. But this is also very time consuming. So what, what I want to show you guys is the running back. <laughs> and the running back is a very important key in, in all the offenses, I think. Here you see the Rex out king. For us, it's to the running back to their strong side, so the right side from the offensive view. Rex out king, they have a lot of pass. So they play 80% pass, which is huge to know. So if you know they come out to the running back on the right side of the quarterback, you almost know that they're going to play a pass. So you can sit down chill, think about your drop, and this all before the play, which takes you a huge advantage for reaction time. You don't have to think so much. And in Queen, you see it's the total opposite. You just see if the running back's on the left side, they run 70, 72%. So they balanced out evenly in the whole formation racks out. But if you concentrate on King and Queen, they totally have a tendency there. Sometimes, it's also that it depends on hash marks or field. It can, it can be variable. But there, I mean, this is a very clear, uh, clear, clear thing that all of you uh, see. And when, so we played them. This is the tendency before the game. And then when we played them, we see here if the tendencies were right. <coughs> Tendencies against the Silverhawks after we the Silverhawks after we played them. Unfortunately, we don't have them in huddle because the off ODK was not how I wanted it. So our offense is offense, so I can't do the report on that. But still, I did it on with the hand. I used to do it before there was huddle available. So we have the Rex out. They play they play 34% run, 66% pass. So it's actually a heavy pass team. Two thirds of their plays are the Rex out is pass. And if we see if we divide it into king, queen, and pistol, which you played only one time, but wasn't, they didn't show it before against us and against other teams, we see that the king tendency was totally right. They still played 78% pass and 22% run. So on, every t on almost every play they played Rex out king, we, could already, we already knew what play is going to be, if it's a run play or a pass play, and that's really big. On Queen, they tried to break their tendency. They, they ran 43% of the time and passed 57% of the time, which is almost balanced. So you can see, also they prepared, they, they knew they had a tendency and tried to break it against us. Then we watch the Austrian ball. So we have, it's a little bit, Now get the Austrian ball. There we had the Vikings. And the problems with the Vikings were that we didn't have a lot of film on them this year because their quarterback was hurt a lot. So he only played once against us in full. Um, like the whole team only play, played once because the quarterback is a big deal. And also, if it's an import, it's also a really big deal because he has to be together with his um, teammates and throw passes. And so the timing has to be perfect and stuff like this. So it was really hard to take a guess before because we only played them once, where we lost, we didn't play well. And the other one, the other game we had, we, we blew them out because the quarterback wasn't playing. So we watch again on it, uh, the tendencies, we see Rex out is their favorite formation, like uh, most of the teams. Then we see Rex wide and Rex off, which is two by two, which is the wing here. And if we go to the to the running back analytics, we see that King has a high tendency of pass against us. This is only the game we played them the first time where the quarterback was healthy. 
So in King, when the running back goes on the right side, they almost have the same tendency as Ljubljana. They pass the time, uh, pass the ball all the time. If it's Queen, it's pretty much balanced out. And if it's this is Pistol, they ran the ball a lot. And the Vikings have a history of running the ball on Pistol with stretches or traps or speed option. So this is a tendency we not we were we were familiar with this tendency, and they. They took advantage of it in the Austrian ball. Because we expect, basically we expect it one all the time. So if we see, if we watch the Austrian ball uh, tendencies out of Rex out, we can see the following. Okay. So, we see here they're pretty much balanced overall, Rex out. And then we see they really broke their tendencies. And that's, I also talked with Coach Heron, our linebacker coach. Um, like the Vikings are really good on breaking tendencies because they know how to build tendencies over the season. They know what tendencies they built and then they try to break them in the most important game because we can only prepare for what we see in the film. Everybody knows that. but. It's also a challenge to not fall back on, into old habits if you're an offensive coach uh, and not fall back the, on the things they work, but really break the tendencies. And you see King, which used to be pass all the time, still was a lot of pass, but they didn't play it a lot. Queen, they ran the ball. They used, they, they switched these two. Queen, they ran the ball a lot, like they used out of pistol. And in pistol, they are very balanced. They are very balanced. And you can see if you if you switch uh, and you break tendencies, it has a great impact because you you're fucking with people's brains. You know, if I I prepare for, I mean, this is the most important game for us every year. So I prepare for this very well. I try to be very keen on what not only it's really easy, it's run and pass, but also on down and distances. I want to know what play they like on down and distances, and then. Uh, it is a real bummer to not get what you what you what you looked at on the film. And then there, so we we are talking about tendencies now, which is really just an overview. You can you can do this, create a report in like two minutes, and it's really easy. It gives you a lot of information, and you can go out to practice and almost call like sometimes 80% of the plays right because you just looked at easy tendencies. And then there's scouting as mental taking mental reps. And this is, I think, the <laughs> most important thing, but also the most time-consuming thing. Because you really, if you watch film, you can't focus on your eyes. Because on the field, there's a lot of stuff going on. But on the uh, in the video, you may, most of the time, you are alone in your bed, chilling, eating chips, doing something, and watching the film. There's nothing that, that, uh, that gets in your way. So I want to show you some plays against the Vikings. This play, uh, this game we lost, unfortunately. But we didn't play well enough to win it, so. First thing you guys want to look at. For me, it's just information because it gives you tendencies. So 
I have this Rex out. It's right here. You have two guys here, two guys here. Is this king or queen from the set? Queen. Queen, exactly. Running backs on the left. So we have Rex out queen. So what, what did we say before? What were, were the tendencies before the Austrian Bowl? Because this is our game before the Austrian Bowl. What should we uh, focus on? I think we're balanced, huh? Exactly. We were very balanced. So now I really have to focus on my eyes because I don't have any tendencies. I look, where, where do you guys want to look as a linebacker? This is a linebacker crew right here. And it, it's always a little different if you play a 3-4 or a 4-3. Like the run, run fit wise is very different because there's a lot of movement in 3-4 defenses. But the eyes are always the same. So you, where do you think, where would you as linebackers put your eyes before the play? Just take a guess. Yeah, okay, as a middle linebacker, I would totally look through the guard into the backfield. That's totally right. And as outside linebackers, where would you like to, to put your eyes? outside receiver backfield. Okay. I would focus first, I would just, because it's so much in your way, if you look at this triangle, it's really big, I would focus from the tackle inside to these guys. Because the tackle gives you away everything. The tackle gives you run and pass, it also gives you a lot of plays, <coughs> And especially with the Vikings, the tackles give away a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and start to play. Stop. What you guys think uh, is happening? Do you think it's a run or pass? Do you think you I should go further with the play to see it, or do you think you can see it also already? What you guys think? Run. Who's for run? Hands. Okay. Who's for pass? Okay. Good. So you can see it here. This guy is the guy from Sacramento State. He always gives it away very quickly. His head is really high. Okay. This is so, he's so small. He's 160, so you can see. But he's really he's really tall guy, so you can you can see the here. His head is up. He's not necessarily going back all the way, but he's like this. Okay. So you can see it's gonna be a pass, even though the running back has not not cleared yet. So from the running back, actually, you don't know anything. But the running backs are very, and the quarterback are very keen on hiding everything possible. The O-line has to play within some rules. So, and also, they're scared of the pressure. So sometimes, they just pop up uh, to be faster uh, in, their, in their drop. And that's what happens here. So we see it's a pass. The next thing that I want to stress is um, the drop of the quarterback. Now my eyes go from... <coughs> So we know it's pass. Look at him. He's already flying back because this is Philip Margarita. And we have, there's, in shotgun formations, we have one step drops and three step drops. Because one step, you just get the ball, boom, look, and throw. It's a really quick ball. And the ball is out quickly. And where do you think the receivers are in this time frame? How, how far can they run until the ball is with, with, within their reach? It's five yards or less. Yeah, exactly. So. It's on linebacker level. We are there to protect the short passes. And in our defense, we have different, cover uh, different coverages for short passes and different coverage for three-step passes. And, but it's not, not really a coverage, the th short pass coverage. It's just to react where the quarterback's throwing the ball. So you just, if you see this quarterback is doing a one-step drop and firing this way, all the linebackers should immediately and simultaneously run to this side and hit anything that's in their way. So you don't want to look at the ball. You don't want to be fancy and pick the ball off. So you just want to destroy somebody, the first target that's in your way. And it's really an effective way to do that because you don't have anything to look at, to think about. You just turn, look at your receiver, and hit the shit out of it. It's actually really easy. But here we see it's a really deep drop. The quarterback's going deep. So now we go into our pattern. Well, our read, depending on what coverage we have. So it all it depends on technique, what you guys do, but you want to see where you're going up. You, you, everybody has a drop. Some are blitzing, some have relayed to number two, some have the curl, I don't know. It really depends on the coverage, but you can <coughs> stress, you don't need to stress so much. A three step pass is a pass <coughs> where you want to be underneath the receivers because the safety is already over the top. And you want to box the guy in, you want to be in the passing lane to intercept the ball, to get a great breakup. And this is something 
I always have still to work on because you're so excited in the game, you know what's coming maybe, and then you're too far ahead of the receiver, he just turns around and the ball's right there. So this is really hard to focus on. It's all, only possible in, if you look at film and look at the progression of the quarterback, look at the depth of the receivers, and also look, just find an indicator. Find if this this interesting, if the, the, the slot receiver, where, where is he aligning? Where is he aligning? Do they have do they align very far outside if they run double slant? Do they do they love do they light align very near if they go across or go do an out route? So there are a lot of indicators if you study hard and watch a lot of film, you can find out. So and now he he takes off. Um. Good. Next play. Okay, what do we what do we see? What formation is it? Breaks out king, exactly. So, is there anything that that is interesting for you as alignment by the receivers, or do you think it's it's okay? Just for before every play, take a guess. Take a guess what's coming. I always think about some plays. Now I I, I shrink my my plays that I think about because I see breaks out king. Okay, King was before, how, ma how many percent pass? I think 80% pass or something like this. So we think about pass now. Then I look at the receivers, because do they give anything away? Now I haven't done enough uh, film study to say, okay, this is on, he's on the numbers, could be something. But in the season, I would probably know what, what could, like just th three or four plays that could come out of this set. So now you can focus on three plays in your head already before the snap. And the, the, the tendency that one of these four plays is coming is, is pretty high. Then. You have 25% and 25% is better, better than nothing compared to uh, you just stand there and don't know what to do. But you have to really focus and zoom in and see the, the, the things that, 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 that were there on the film before, on the field. It's not that easy, but if with with practice, like everything, it's possible. Okay, now we get a motion. Motions, always a little tricky, like Coach said before, they always like to motion. It's a pain in the ass for defenses, because they, it just everything changes. Now it goes to three by one, or he snaps the ball beforehand. But the eyes are also very important. Where do you think, do you think I still look at this guy, or are there are different ways to approach this? But right now, I remember from our game plan that we had, the approach is just different. You wanna, who do you think gives away the play right here? Somebody can give away the play. What can happen with this guy? He could, what do you think? Jet sweep. Jet sweep, okay, very common play, exactly. But what, what is important on a jet sweep if you, to know if he's getting the ball or not? What do you guys think? The running back. Yeah, exactly, the running back. Because if there's a jet sweep, what do you think would he, he would do? He blocks. He blocks for him. Okay, there's one of the linebackers. He's probably going for him. He's climbing up to the next linebacker. So he wants to block somebody. These two guys block him and him, and they probably end up with a big, big game. So that's, this is the reason the offense motions. And, but now we know. We look at him. So we take away their advantage they have because they know what, what they're doing. So if we look at the motion, so, okay, now. Now you know what play is going to be. Is he becoming the ball? Do you think he's getting the ball? No. Why? Exactly. The running back is not running here. The running back is running downhill. So who's going to probably have the ball in his hands? Either him or him. But in this case, it's going to be the running back. See? Because otherwise he would run naked and would get destroyed by this linebacker. So they, they know, they did their homework, of course, and they're great coaches, so they know what to do. But we have to, to know this also, and it gives us a huge advantage. It's just standing here, motion coming up. I look at the, I look, now I look at the running back, and it's really easy to see it, but you have to, to do this switch of, of eyes from the tackle, you see the motion peripherally, and now you look at the running back. And now you can tell what, what's going to be. Okay. Explain. <clears throat> OK, 
okay, we go through the easy motion. It's really repetitive, but that's the only way to get better at it, to repeat and repeat, like in practice. This is, this is a practice for me. Like, this is just like I'm on the field. It's, it's just the eyes. They're so important in defense. The eyes tell you, like, where to put them. Because if you look at something, for young, like, I always tell my, my young, my young uh, players when I coach them, it's really important to have, like, I think I have it here, a setup in your mind. You want to know what to do in what situation. You need to have a plan. And it's like, like such a diagram right here. You, you check the formation first. You take a guess. You see Rex out, King, okay. I know from my film studying it's 80% pass. Before the snap, it's really important because it shrinks down to three plays max. And you can focus. Then you look at the O-line, guard or tackle, depending on what position you play. And then if it's a run, the O-line runs into you, or into your D-line and comes at you. There's one thing to think about, because pre-game you already know where you're going to fit. But it's important if there's a puller or not, because then it changes. Because when it's a puller, I skip my gap. I, so I don't know if you guys uh, know that, but Hmm, now it's hard to draw something up, it's not possible, right? Anyways, so if, if you have, like, um, could you guys stand up? Three, three guys of you? Yeah. yeah. So if you guys stand up, turn to the, to the audience. Exactly. This guy is pulling, he's going to the other side. So now what's, what's happening is, my gap is not there anymore. So I'm, I'm as a linebacker. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Me as a linebacker. <laughs> I have pre-snap, I had this gap. Say, let's say I have this gap pre-snap. So if there's going to be a run, the double team here, he blocks out, I hit this gap full, full speed. But now he's gone, he's gone. So my d lineman who's in there now has a huge gap, but it's still his gap. When he goes around, two new gaps are created. And that's what, where I got to go. So it's a difference if it's a, yeah, a puller or not. And that's very important to see on film. So the first thing is the tackle, the next thing is the puller. And then, um, if on it, and if it's no puller, it's really easy, I just hit my gap. The thing is, the linebacker job is pretty easy because we're not the most athletic. Like, we're not DBs, we're not so fast, we're not so strong as the D lineman, we're more in the middle. That's why we can work with our brains a lot. We can prepare good, uh, very good. And in pass, I, I told you already, I look if the quarterback's one stepping, I hit the nearest right receiver, or if he's three-stepping, I just chill and see what's happening. He does a three-step draw, I clear the draw, the running back runs in front of the quarterback, and the draw is cleared. The only thing that could happen is like a flea flicker type of, type of play. But this is yeah, something you have to worry as a coach about and tell, <laughs> tell, to tell the player. <laughs> and then you can make your easy drop depending on what play what player uh, so you have, you have a plan, you know, it's always the same, it's not very complicated, <coughs> but it has to be wrapped, you have to have a lot of repetitions in it to get this clear. Because for young people, it's, they are distracted by so many things, there are like 11 play, uh, players on there, some is wearing an eye shield, the quarterback is doing something, so you, you always look around like, what the fuck is going on? But you really have to zoom in and concentrate on your stuff and not the other stuff that can happen. A run away is not my play. It's just not, and we see, uh, we see an example later, where you just have to think about your stuff and try not to form the next man's life. Okay. So we were here, we had Rex up King, so we're thinking about pass. Now we look at the nearest in film. I always up. <laughs> So now, um, Rex out King. <clears throat> okay. So now we uh, see Rex out King. We're thinking pass already. And I always look at the closest tackle because it's easier for my reads. But he's really giving it away big time. So, we look at the receiver, 
alignment. He's inside the hash. He's on the numbers. Could be a sign. I don't know. He, they're really bunched because he's on the numbers on the boundary side. So always watch the whole picture. See if there's anything funny. Then, you're, then do your easy reads. Okay. He's not giving away that, that big because there's nobody in his way, but he does. You see, he's, he's the farthest back of all of them. So it's probably our tendency is right. We have a pass right here, even though the running back hasn't cleared it yet. But you really can sink into our drops. And with our linebackers, sometimes they're so good reading pass that they're too fast back. They don't chill. We need to chill more. Like we, we see these so fast, these all linemen popping up, that we're already gone. But we really have to focus on clear the draw and fall back because you want to be underneath this guy. This is actually not that good. We want to be here to get the interception, to have the chance to, to get it off. But now he can use his body to shield us off from the ball. And this is a way we always have to work on because nothing is perfect. So we see it's again a five-step drop. From, from the tackle, we go to the quarterback with our eyes. Boom. Now I let him drop. OK, I see it's three-step, so it's really deep. Now I go into my progression. Here we are too fast. Here we are too fast. Everybody's too fast for my guys. And then we block the Vikings block here and still catch the ball, which is a little But never mind. Good. It's really repetitive, but that's how it has to be, because otherwise you never learn. OK, now, good example for next time. We have here the guys. We see it's Rex out King. We're expecting pass from the beginning. He's really uh, narrow. Like it's, it's almost the same like the last times. But now, again, boop, get the motion. Our eyes switch to this guy, and we'll see what's going to happen. OK, could be two things now. Could be he get, him getting the ball or just a normal pass. Now that we see he's going to the side, we have to, it's really hard to describe, sometimes you just feel it. If you do it long, long enough, you feel if the O-line comes at you or if they go back. And in this situation, you probably should feel it. And drop into a three-step into your normal coverage drop. And we had a big play almost, where a D-line, which is always very big. Such a play is really big. Now you can catch it. It's even bigger. Good. One of the last plays I want to show you. <coughs> and also what's interesting, sometimes I just look at the quarterback. Like there's different tasks you can do with film study. You can do tendencies, scouting, like this repetition of, of your mental, uh, mental eyes, or of your eyes mentally. And then a lot of quarterbacks do a lot of stuff. And I, I, I really, sometimes I write them out. Okay, if he's doing this, it's a comeback. If he's doing this, it's a, I don't know, a fade. So it's really hard. Sometimes they just give you something because they know you're looking at it. But it's part of it. You know, it's, it's, it's also funny to find out. And my brother as a scout quarterback in our teams. He always gives us something. Like I tell him, give us all the signals they do. And he does uh, on certain plays. So it's really funny to to spend time on it, but um, it's also very important to just get ahead. Okay, Rex out king, we expect, expecting, pass. We see it, pass, okay. The O-line and the running back all, already cleared. Could be a screen though. Okay, five step drop, we just get in our drop. So this is really important to get it. This, this is the main thing. See if it's run or pass, and know where to put your eyes. Good. Now, I want to go into something more. Well, Bobby, yeah. Yeah. we had situations where the QB, and that's in the NFL, where the QB feet parallel was he was exactly. given the ball for a run, feet staggered, yeah. but always a pass. That's really that's we, we found that out. That's big indicators. Like we had we had the time, as coach said. There are quarterbacks, there were actually two quarterbacks that did it. If, if they had the feet like this, it's a pass, 100% almost. Or, and if, the, if they have it like this, they're here for the, for the zone read or play action. So if they do the fake. So there's a lot of little things that you can worry about. I mean, I think sometimes it's too, too much for a player to do it. But if you have the time or you like doing it, it's really worth it. It pays out. And you can also talk with your coaches and discuss stuff like this and be really ahead 
of all the other guys. And then personal big plays. I think I'm always when I go uh, into practice week, I look at film. Like first I do practice because I want to know the game plan, where I'm at and what position. Coaches tell us, okay, strong set is this side this week. We always have uh, a different coverage each week because our coverage is very flexible. So um, you have to know, if you want to make a big play, you have to know where you're at at the, at the moment. So you look, for example, on a flea flicker, and you know, okay, this is on my side, or I'm blitzing on this one. So you know beforehand that this is one play I could make. And then you have, have to have to finish game and choose a challenge. Choose the challenge that you want to make this play happen. You want to make this big pick, or you want to make this great tackle to get your team where they want to be. And it's only some, like it's, as coach said before, three plays in a game could change the game. And I always want to be one, one of these plays I want to make. And it's not happening often because it's really hard. But it gets you closer if you think about it and you try and you want to do it. So I always pick plays, find hidden hints to, to get to the play I want to be and find out when they're going to play this play. And you have to be obsessed with this one play. Here's a, a, a little example and practice, of course. And do it also in practice because the plays come in practice. And here's a little example from a long time ago. But this is the first time that I found out that this is really working. Like film studying does something for you and it, it gives you something back. And they, the Vikings, they played a lot of zone read. They had an import running back, played a lot of zone read. And I knew I was out outside linebacker on this side all the time. It was three by one. We had the strength <coughs> here. I was here. And I knew I had nothing to do with the zone read. It doesn't. Like, it doesn't matter for me at all. If I'm involved here, I don't have any cutback. Nothing is there for me. So I just said, there is sometimes they pull it out and throw it to these guys. And this is where RPOs started. Now everybody's doing RPOs. But this is the time where RPOs started. They do this and turn and throw it. As soon as they read whatever he read there. I don't know. But to think about this, I, I, was, I was telling my mom at breakfast. I do this also now. Always before the games, I do. Um, I, I look at the plays I want to. I want to. I want to accomplish only these like three big plays. I look at all of them, and see if I can can find something more out before the game. And then uh, I was sitting in my room, still was living with uh, with my family. And then at breakfast, I said, "Mom, I'm gonna pick this ball." Up. I was like, "I'm gonna pick it off." If, if the quarterback uh, rides him and throws it to one of these guys. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be there so fast, I'm going to pick it off today. And I believed it, and it didn't quite work out, but almost. Mm -hmm. So it was still a big play, but it was not, <laughs> not what I expected. But still, if you, if you see something, and you want to do something so bad, it gets you in a position, and film allows you to do that, to get you, in, get you gets, uh, into this position. Here, another um, example. In pistol, Vikings lo love to run the ball, especially in this uh, this year. They love to play stretch, and they played stretch all day long. But then they knew we were hauling ass to the stretch all the time. But they had a play action where this guy, which is a really tall receiver, uh, runs out route and just gets the ball, and they have a first down. So I knew that, and I had nothing to do with the stretch on this side. And it allows me to focus on, on other stuff. So I see stretch to this guy, my eyes immediately went through here. Because I know they have this play, but I need to see the key. The key here was for me, this guy. So if he, if he hauls ass to get to his out route, I'm a better be at him. Because there is nobody who can, can make the play out. So again, oops. Again, it didn't work out perfectly, but it, it just gives you an edge to be where you want to be. Yeah. And this is just film studying. It's not magic. It's like you see this, you just wait, be patient, and you're there when the ball's there. And I have fish hands, so I can't catch. But <laughs> this, is, this is just something who can get you into, into really good situations and get your team in really good situations. Just take a guess and pick some plays. It's not a lot. But they like these crucial plays for them. And then they, they go back to it. Here's another. Uh, it's not me this time because I, I watched film with Vincent there. 
a lot in this week in the preparing Austrian World Week, so we watched it together and, and also Coach Ruan stressed it in practice a lot. Like they gave it away with their with their alignment. They're very far outside and he tried to get his main target which was a huge guy. And Vincent is one of he's also tall but he's more skinny than him. He's a really uh, strong guy. But look at look at his depth. He's already there because he he knows that he could, with a lot of a uh, lot of speed, he can bring this guy down. And here's what happens. You know, they play double slant, and then he just goes in there and kills him. And this guy was out for the game. So it's just little things to take advantage of. Um, and also here we have a little funnier. This was this year in the in the European Championship, and this is one of our linebackers, Simon Riedel. And it was really actually a funny story because I know I knew I watched film and knew that if this is a dead side tight end, there's a high possibility, and also they played this with the Copenhagen Towers, that he's gonna most likely have a corner route because there's so much space here and he's just a huge guy and a huge target. So what I did in practice, I was always on this side. I don't know why I was on this side because the strong side was was that way. So I just told him, "Hey, Simon, we have to switch. I know the play." And he was like, "What?" And I go, get the fuck over here. And he was like, no. And I was like, yeah, get over here. I know what's coming. And so he just did. And it turned out to be great for him as well. <clears throat> because I saw this. I, see, I said, oh, shit, I have to go there. Go there, Simon. It's not the real nice way to do it, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I stayed on the, on the corner. He had nowhere to throw to. And Simon made a great hit. <laughs> so he's still mad to it. <laughs> he still talks like, about this a lot. Good, but it wasn't a flag. It was took taken back. It was targeting at first, but he didn't target. So, good. I have, I'm finished. What do you guys? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I got one. Uh, you talked about chilling once you get the run back who's clear. Is that also for screens? For sorry. screens, run back screens. Yeah. Okay. Screens. Yeah, screens are a difficult topic. Screens. Sometimes you just sniff it out because the running back doesn't behave the same. It's reading the body language more than watching or also watching film because they always do the same thing if, they, if you read the body language. For example, uh, also if the running back's cutting, you can see this on the film. They just totally behave differently. One of the Giants running backs, he always goes and just goes down. He does it all the time the same way. So it's really thinking about body language and, and seeing what he does all the time to figure out what it's going to be. And the screen is a really hard play, a uh, really hard play to figure out. So it's more really hard film studying and knowing the guy also because you play the guys multiple times a year and seeing how they do it. And every, he can't, he can't, he, he cannot change it probably because it's so, it's so natural for him to do his do the screen all the time the same way. But also D line has a huge impact on <coughs> sniffing out screens because uh, if they the owner lets you through something is wrong. Anything else? Fast. Good. Thanks for the...